Okay, sure, you can that's start. Well, it's a directing panel, so you can do that. Yeah, we can just start a little bit. We can start, since Trina's apparently <laughs> talking to her bookie and can't be bothered. Hi, husband. Tell him I miss him, so. Okay, we'll take this time to introduce ourselves and mention what we, what we directed. But first, let me take this microphone apart. Okay. Because I'm going to need to introduce myself. Of course. <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, I'm Richard Epcar, for those of you who have no clue, and um, uh, directed a lot of stuff over the years. I started, well, I started directing actually stage plays. That was a long, long time ago, but I started directing a, a feature film called Captain Schnauzer. That's what kind of got me started on all this stuff. And from there I did Swiss Family Robinson, and then I got into directing a lot of live action films, a lot of Academy Award movies like Bella Pac, Cinema Paradiso, Eat, Drink, Man, Woman, Fencing Master, things like that. And then I got into directing a lot of anime series like No End, Fighting Spirit, Lupin the Third, to name a few. And uh, then now I'm directing a lot of games uh, like Star Ocean 1 and 2 and uh, some other games that I can't remember right now. But uh, Oh, Blue Dragon is one of them. But I've, I've directed a lot of stuff over the years, and it's really fun. I get to direct myself, which is always nice, because me as a director and me as an actor get along really well. So, <laughs> so uh, we always agree on everything. So anyway, that's my background in directing. Hi, I'm Sean Chell, and I, I no longer direct, but when I was directing, I directed the first two volumes of Oh My Goddess, uh, Midori Days, Space Pirate Mito, Sodom to the Destroyer. Um, the last volume of Berserk, um, uh, what else did I do? I'm trying to think, because it's been so long. Uh, Nana 707, and uh, uh, that's most of them. Oh, The Weathering Continent, and uh, that's pretty much it. Um, but I thought I would join the panel because I do have some experience doing this, so I might be able to share something, I don't know. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm Tom Whalen, and um, I've been doing this for a while. Uh, I have directed I don't know, a lot of stuff. Uh, I directed a lot of things for Central Park Media back in the day when I used to work for them. It's, uh, a couple of pretty cool shows I worked on, like Alien 9, it was really neat. And uh, did, I did the animated Ichi the Killer, uh, the prequel thing, which is, is pretty hardcore. Um, I worked on uh, World of Norway, which is a cute show. And I directed a lot of stuff uh, for four kids as well. I did uh, Mew Mew Power and Magical Girl Ray Me. And, and I used to pinch it for them, so I also directed like a little bit of G.I. Joe and a little bit of Winks, and, uh, and I've been directing Pokemon for the last three and a half years. Pokemon. That's right. Um, pika, pika. And you're hired. Uh, <laughs> and I've also directed a lot of not anime stuff, a ton of animation, a lot of uh, foreign animation, but some also original American stuff, which has been pretty cool. Uh, a lot of live action dubbing, um, Turkish soap operas starring him. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, I've been busy. So that's, that's, that's me. Brina. Hi, I'm Brina Palizia. Wow. And I, ADR directed School Rumble, uh, last eight episodes of Moon Phase, the Holic movie, and first eight episodes of the series and uh, uh, Black Blood Brothers, and I currently music direct, I don't really ADR direct all that much anymore, uh, but I music directed uh, second season of Negama, uh, My Bride is a Mermaid, uh, I'm currently doing Rosario Vampire, and uh, I know I music directed a lot of other stuff, but I can't remember. Those are only, those, we're the only people at the time who have any directing experience worth hearing about. Yeah, these other people that are coming up, I mean, they, did, they claim yeah. to be directors, but they don't really matter. Oh, wait. Like, ah. <laughs> Chris and Jameer Tatum. Shimmel, I swear to God. We're going to get asking me right on the stage. It's going to be awesome. Introduce yourself. Uh, We've been introducing ourselves last time. Uh, my name is Chris Ayers, uh, ADR director for, oh gosh, ADV Films, uh, Music Park Media. Uh, Seraphim Digital Studios. Yeah, cool. I think that's it. Uh, Jay Michael Tatum, um, director for Funimation. 
projects I've worked on have been, uh, let's see, Quarion, Romeo X Juliet, uh, Rin Daughters of the Masane. I've also done a little bit of directing on Big Wind Up, and um, Shikabani Hime. Oh, it's just so weird. Okay. Well, just so they know <laughs> what you're directing. Oh, yeah. oh uh, Nirma Daikon Brothers, uh, Second Season of the Wallflower, Mermaid Melody, Pitchy Pitchy Pitch, uh, Magic Hano, Xenosaga the Animation. Without me. I don't start. <laughs> that broke my heart, Richard. That broke my heart, too. Yeah. We'll tell you the story. Yeah, we will. It's a sad tale. Yeah, All right, so everyone introduce themselves. Do you have any questions for us about directing? Thank you if you had one first. So what's the direction of all this, this question? Or, okay. Uh, where do you want to start? Um, well, it varies from project to project, and it also varies on who your producer is. True. Uh, some producers have a very active hand in what you do. Some take a very hands-off approach. Uh, I will say that the stuff that we do in Houston, we don't edit any of it. We, we can't change any of it. We don't rotoscope anything. Uh, we, we don't make any changes like that. Um, I, I think the, the most important thing if I'm following your question, and I'm very tired, so I may not be, is that, and, and I think this is for all of us, our job is essentially being the caretaker of someone else's creation. And, and we have to honor that. Um, so, you know, we do have to occasionally make changes to the script, uh, the, the ADR script that we get, um, in order to make it fit flaps and make it look good. But I, I, every director worth their salt that I know tries to keep the original creator's intent um, in their head when, when, when they're having to make those changes. That probably didn't answer your question. But, okay, cool. Um, yeah, and then as far as uh, how to get the right performance, I think that was another part oh. of your question. Um, it, it, to me, it really just depends on who the actor is mm -hmm. and knowing what their background is and knowing what they would respond to. Like, you know, a stage or film actor, I feel, would be, you could say certain things to them differently than you can to someone who has never done any sort of acting at all. Exactly. Or uh, with a musician, you know, you can be more specific as far as, you know, placement of voice and all that. Um, but as far as, that's as far as ADR directing. As far yeah. as music directing, which is what I do primarily now, um, my job is just to uh, take the English translation of the Japanese and adapt it Adapt, adapt it rhythmically to the uh, song. Because most of the time, it's you know like half the amount of syllables in the translation <laughs> that's needed to make it actually sound good. Uh, so I do that while trying to keep the original intent as, much as po intent as much as possible. And when they use English, random English words, as hard as it is sometimes, I try to make sure that I keep them in the same placement. And uh, then I also pick the singer. And it's kind of the same thing. Thing. Some, I've had to direct a lot of non-singers on uh, character songs, and it can be really hard, but that's actually, I think, my favorite part of it. It's just sort of teaching. It's, it's like a, it's kind of like having a voice lesson, like sort of teaching people how to sing. It's really fun. I like it. Um, I think, first of all, the most important thing a director can have is good communication skills. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that, unfortunately, a lot of directors don't. And they may have in their head what they want, but they don't know how to convey it to the actor, and that's a problem. So you really have to be able to, to speak to people and, and communicate what it is you want from them. And, and uh, you know, it, it does vary, you know, with different actors and different projects. And, uh, you know, as Chris was saying, when you're doing a dubbing project, you do have to kind of remain true to the project and what the original creation is. I've, I've had the good fortune to be able to direct some original animated uh, films and things like that and that's wonderful because then you just have a clean slate and you can go in and play with the actors and it's really a lot a lot of fun to do that so oh um, I just want to see if I can answer all you have several questions and they're all very good questions and I just want to make sure I get it right um, I agree with all my colleagues here um, I, I think for me in terms of you're talking about how much control you have after it's in your hands that's a really good question because 
in, in producing and such. At the studio, I had also been to the studio work at. The studio I worked at, which was NYV Post, we had a very small staff, meaning it was me and Michael for a while. And uh, so I was, you know, essentially producing myself uh, and making a lot of creative decisions. But as far as how much control you have, to give you an example, um, I adapted a lot of the script myself. And when they started doing writing, they hired a writer, and it was good, but I was directing the show, and I was changing every single line as we went. And I had that kind of lead latitude, because I just didn't like it. I mean, the writer's fine writer, I just didn't agree with it. Um, as far as acting and getting the best out of an actor, when I first started, I made the mistake a lot of directors make, is I kind of made it my own vision, and I kind of really directed everything the way I wanted to hear it. And then I realized, one, I was working too hard, and two, my shows were one note. So what I mean was everybody, everybody sounded like how I would act. So then I kind of you know, thought about it, and I you know, grew as a director, and I made up this what I call the 80% rule, which is if it's up to a certain standard, if it's below a certain standard, I'm gonna still focus on my vision. Once it gets above a certain standard, and I'm like, it's good, Yes, because I'm letting the talent bring into, like I don't want it to suck, but once it gets good enough, if you let your talent bring their view to it, then you have a show that's greater than the sum of its parts. Absolutely. And that's so important uh, because my show's got better and I work less hard because I'm not trying to so make it that way. I'm like, show me what you got. And you know, when I start, I wouldn't start directing that way, but I mean, you know, it's kind of my attitude. And a lot of times I'll take a first take. If it's visceral and reactive and, and it's a good actor and I've, given the right direction, I totally agree with Richard about yeah. communication. And sometimes you want to give less communication. Uh, if I'm directing sometimes, you have a lot of background and they don't need that, or sometimes they do, and then you have to direct the cue again. Sometimes you just want to say, do exactly what you did, hit this word harder. Or sometimes you got to go back and say, oh, no, 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 here's the emotional content, here's what's going on in the storyline. The other thing that's really hard for dubbing directors, and I'm sure you all agree with me, is that we haven't heard the whole show once the first guy's recording. So as other people come in, you've got to keep the vision of how all the, the, the dialogue connects together so it sounds like they're talking to each other, because you only have one part, then the next part, and, and, and as it comes together at the end, then it starts to make sense. But you got, between session and session, you gotta make sure you keep all that in your head. So I do a lot of review over, okay, is that gonna fit, is that gonna fit? And then after it's all done, then we review again, and then after that, if I wanna do pickups, there's that. So I hope that, I had a lot of control when I was directing. I mean, probably too yeah. much, I got in trouble a few times, because I kinda just, I'm the kind of director that was like, yeah, we'll do that. I'm like, oh, sorry, it's late. Oh, this is all I can do. <laughs> Which is not a good thing to do. I, was, I, I got in trouble with that. But then I behaved myself later. To, to tie in real quick. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Said, to tie in before sure. Tom. Um, I find, I, I love the collaborative aspect. Yeah, yeah. And I will tell you this, 90% of what is wonderful in shows that I've directed has been an actor going, I think I got a better one. Can I yeah, yeah, more yeah. Time? Anytime an actor thinks they've got something that is going to be better, I think nine times out of ten they're right. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm like, let's go. Because their headspace is really in the character, especially exactly. if you've been playing a character a long time. And your headspace is in all the characters, yeah. you know? So it really helps to let them bring their talent to the table. And that's really important. That's a good director to let yeah. your actors do that, because not all directors do that. Cast, no, we got it. We're moving on. Cast well and trust your Trust your, trust your talent. That's why they're called talent. Casting is... Is 80% of it. Yeah. yeah, well, that's the thing, it's the preparation. You know, um, having a good script, having good, yeah, accurate yeah. casting yep. helps very much because then you just let the actors act, let them do their jobs. And as a director, I like to, I like to give them as much prep as possible. It's like, this is your character, this is who you are, this is what you know, this is what you're doing, this is what's happening in the scene, go, you know? Yeah. And then just let them do their thing. And then if they are sort of going off course and then nudge them back on course, rather than getting, uh, being too micromanaging with it. Um, it also, see, none of us are the boss. We're all working for somebody yep. when you do this. And it, a lot of that then depends on, who you're working for in terms of, let's say with anime, how much do you want it to be just like the Japanese? Some want it to be very much just like the Japanese. Some people want to change things, you know? People bitch about four kids all the time, whatever. The thing you gotta understand with those programs and what they were doing, they weren't marketing them to you, to anime fans. They were marketing them to a wide audience, middle America, and listen, it's about marketing, it's about money, uh, anything that seems too foreign, and no offense if you're from the middle of the country, but anything that seems too foreign might scare off people from the middle of the country sometimes. 
So from a business standpoint, they're like, well, let's change these things. And then if that's what the producers are saying, then that's what you do, you know? Because you want to keep working. What's that? If, if you don't do what the producers ask you to do, then you won't keep working. Yeah, and you know, and